the idea of managing is designing is to bring to focal awareness that what managers do most of the time is design things. Design organizations, design products, design services, design processes. And if they become better designers, they will be better managers and will live in a better world. I think we should care about managing as designing because the world needs new kinds of organizational forms, new ways to communicate, new ways of creating teams, new ways of collaborating across organizations, new ways of approaching familiar problems with an attitude that the alternatives that we had taken for granted in the past are not good enough. There's a great deal in management. There's a great deal of, of executing the familiar. I learned to do it this way. This is how the person who handed the job over to me did it. I'm going to do it that way. There are several reasons why many of our great managers choose not to do it that way, and many of our students won't want to do it that way. One of them is the world keeps changing, as does the competitive environment. Another one is the solutions we have for many of our systems aren't all that great. They're environmentally destructive, or they're socially repressive, or they're, um, uh, they retard the rate at which children are able to develop and learn. They, they're just not yet the best possible solutions. But a third and I think very compelling reason is it's a lot more fun to go to work every day and design new things and new approaches. Herb Simon did many, many things in his career, but one that's most relevant and important to us and to this effort is he attempted to distill what makes good management. And when he did that, he said there are three kinds of things that make good management. Intelligence, design, and choice. Intelligence has gotten a lot of attention. And we see it in market research, we see it in uh, database development and so forth. Choice has gotten a lot of attention. Again, market models, uh, decision theory, uh, optimization models. Uh, design has gotten considerably less in attention. But once you get beyond organizational development work, there's precious little that goes on or has gone on in the last, say, 20, 30 years that's directly related in management, education at least, to design. I was privileged to be the faculty member who worked with Frank Gehry and his associates on the design and construction of the Lewis Building for the Weatherhead School. In that period of time, I came to see that they were approaching problems in a very different way from the way we approach them in a management school and the way we teach our students to approach them. I think working with the Frank Gehry group definitely has changed me. I mean, we're doing this project, which is essentially saying, you know, we've been doing things wrong for the last 20 years in our teaching, so that's a change. And uh, it's also changed my research. I'm now deeply involved in uh, trying to understand ways in which managers are engaged in design day to day in their, ev in their everyday continuous activity, even though they're not aware of it and then trying to think of ways we can surface those design activities and help people reflect on them and get better uh, at doing them. As Dick and I made the, the decision after a long time together here to actually do some work in this area, uh, we decided to take something of a design approach. And rather than nailing down in very uh, formal and specific terms of research program, we thought it would be a great idea to bring together some very clever people who would have interest in the topic and just get a conversation going. And in order to ensure that it be pretty loose and freewheeling, we wanted to get people with a very diverse set of backgrounds. So we looked to have artists and composers and music critics alongside managers and social scientists and um, organizational theorists. Well, I think that the pleasure started because we were told we could write absolutely anything we liked and that we should, if you like, it was a flight of fancy. We should think about management, we should think about design, and we should be as provocative as we can. Now, that's real pleasure for an academic because, in fact, in the main, we're not allowed that degree of freedom. So that was a very clever invitation. The other thing is I trust the choice of participants. So I believe that I will find engaging people and interesting people and people with whom I can talk about art and music and design and management. And that's already shown itself here. So I come with high expectations which have been met. One of the real richnesses of the conference was that there were people 
in music. They were people who were interested in design, knew about design. Uh, people who were making tax systems. I mean, it was, a, it was a real strength of the conference that it was so diverse. Well, first of all, we've been planning this for two years. And as you get closer and closer to the event happening, uh, you start to get a little nervous. So the first time the whole group laughed, that was a great high point for me because it showed, okay, this thing is working. I'd had conversations with Frank. He can be pretty unpredictable. He told me he didn't know what the hell was going on and what were we doing this for. But very soon he started talking and he got really excited about the idea that his design process, let's say design process in general, and especially his personal approach, had the ability to carry over and inform other professions and that managers would be better managers if they took a design approach to their everyday tasks. I'm staggered by the, the breadth of, of um, thinking, the uh, literary references, the art references, the, and, and uh, I know very well that I'm in the presence of a, of a, a serious uh, group of people who are agonizing about things that are, in a way, very similar to the things I agonize about, although our language, our vocabulary is different.